Ten Nations Cup is back and it kicks off in stunning Doha, Qatar. Doha is the gateway to the Middle East, a gleaming skyscraper strewn metropolis of shiny new contours and gleaming glass rising from the sands of the Arabian Desert in the heart of the Gulf. This is a modern, cosmopolitan, multicultural metropolis, a melting pot of nations that has emerged as a true economic and cultural beacon in the region, bolstered by immense natural resources and a finely honed vision of the future. Qatar is also proud of its rich cultural past and traditions, boasting a rich history that it jealously guards today. The historic Arab Dows and Doha's traditional soup market offer a glimpse of Qatar's rich legacy and centuries-old position as an important trading port in this part of the world. Today, Doha has evolved its rich maritime history by having become one of the world's top marine motorsport destinations. The 2015 UIM Nations Cup was part of a powerboat celebration that also featured the UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship and the UIM F1 H2O World Championships in a two-week-long festival of machines on water. Having first begun in 2011, this is the fifth year for the UIM Nations Cup, an H2O racing creation that has proven a big hit by introducing nation-based racing in stock racing boats, which they pick by luck of the draw. The UIM Nations Cup, as always, features time trials, a match race, and two sprint races, as drivers try to reap as many points for their team as they can, and they share two props between them, one boat gets the big prop, the other gets the small one. Nations Cup is a championship open to any nation. Every team uh, consists in two drivers from the same nation that race together to achieve uh, the win. It's not a singular race with a singular driver. It does not uh, count what only one does, but uh, uh, is a team uh, race, uh, not just a matter of uh, the single race but all the weekend and be the most consistent and fast of everyone. In the Nations Cup, it's consistency and teamwork that counts. There are seven nations competing in the 2015 Grand Prix of Qatar. Last year's Nations Cup champions, Team Belarus, are back. Their drivers, Dmitry Malkin and Roman Vandeshev. Once again, Team Belarus will be one of the favorites. In boats three and four are local heroes, Team Qatar, looking for their first home win. Khalid al Kuwari has been competing in Nations Cup since the first event, and also back in the team is the talented Mohamed Alobaidli. Known for their consistency and teamwork is Team Saudi Arabia, once again featuring Saud Abdulaziz Ahmed in boat five and Naeem Mohamed Al Kadawi in boat six. It's great to be uh, part of this uh, beautiful race, especially in, uh, in C class. So we love it. Competing for the first time in the Nations Cup is Team Germany, featuring two newcomers to the championship, F4 champion Mike Simura and Bernd Enzenhofer. The Nations Cup event is, is beautiful. It's the race uh, weekend here in Doha is very nice and the boat uh, is very fast on the water. That brings us to one of the traditional heavyweight Nations Cup favorites, Team Russia. They've got the seasoned Andrei Panyushkin and Konstantin Ustinov. Boats 11 and 12 belong to Team Italy, the Nations Cup runner-up last year. They have two new drivers, Roberto Lopiano and Domenico Leidi. And last but not least, two-time Nations Cup champions, Team UAE, 
featuring the brilliant Rashid Al Kamzi, who memorably won both sprint races in Abu Dhabi in 2013, winning the trophy for the UAE. Al Kamzi is joined by Rashid Al Ramayti. Standard dunk test was a chance for teams, drivers and rescue crews to test and prepare for possible dangerous situations on the water. Time trials determine the starting lineup for Sprint Race 1, and they also determine the top eight pairings for the match race, with first pairing eight. There's the entry list, seven teams, 14 drivers, battling it out for the nation's cup. Qualifying was delayed two hours due to strong winds and rough seas. We take the decision to delay this uh time trial session because the water conditions, uh, I mean the weather, general weather conditions are not uh, uh, safe enough to, to send the boats to the water. Later that day, there were still gusty conditions and large waves, but the qualifying session went ahead on the 1,580 meter four pin circuit in Doha Bay, albeit reduced to just 30 minutes. Thirteen drivers went out for qualifying, trying to nail the right setup. Rashid Al Kamzi unable to compete with technical problems. The engine is not uh, giving the more power. The Saudi drivers were more than eight seconds off the pace on the day. Team Italy's Domenico Lady managed 8th place with a fastest lap time of 57.07 seconds, but his teammate Roberto Lopiano managed 4th spot. Bernd Enzenhofer of Team Germany beat Domenico Lady's time to claim 7th spot with a best time of 56.25 from 11 laps. Enzenhofer's teammate Mike Simura's boat had trouble staying together in the rough conditions, but he still managed the 3rd fastest time of the day with a 52.28 fastest lap. Belarus driver Roman Vandeshev was nearly flawless out there, laying a fastest lap time of 51.52 to beat Shimura and claim second place on the starting grid for sprint race one. But the big result of the day was the fastest driver in practice too, Andrei Panyushkin of Russia. The Russian driver produced a stunning display negotiating the rough conditions well to lay down a blistering fastest lap time of 50.94. Panyushkin has pole position for sprint race one. He'll be the man to beat. Conditions were quite bad. There was a lot of waves and wind, so it's really nice to get the pole position and feel like you're in first. There are the final results. Panyushkin with pole ahead of Vandeshev and Shimura. Roberto Lopiano with a good result in fourth. Rashid Al Kamzi will have to start back in the field. The match race, uh, you know, is. It's very uh, exciting to me and it's my favorite race. In the match race, two boats line up against each other for the best of three runs on a two-pin alternate course with one short lap and one long lap. Konstantin Ustinov of Russia went up against Rashid al Ramayti, which Ustinov won in convincing style. <laughs> Two nil. His teammate Andrei Panyushkin faced Qatar's sole representative Mohammed Alobaidli in the first round, with the Russian coming up trumps against the young Qatari. Meanwhile, Roman Vandeshev of Belarus also made the quarterfinals, where he faced Ustinov. 
it was tight between the two, but Ustinov was the winner, moving into the semis against Saud Ahmed of Saudi Arabia. Andrei Panyushkin went up against Mike Simura of Germany in the semis, beating the German to move into the final. In the other semi-final, Konstantin Ustinov had a tough fight against Saud Ahmed, beating him to set up an all-Russian final. In the fight for third place, Shimura beat Saud Ahmed. In the final, Panyushkin seemed the favorite with his pole position in qualifying. But two jump starts and disqualification gifted the match race win to his teammate, Ustinov. That result gave Russia the perfect start to their Nations Cup campaign with maximum points, putting them on top of the table with 47 points. Simura's third place and Enzenhofer's tenth place earned Germany 31 points, while Belarus amassed 29 points with Vandeshev and Malkin. took Team Germany's Mike Simura to the historic Doha Souk, where he enjoyed the local delicacies and soaked in the ambience. Das Besondere an Katar ist einfach äh I really feel good to be here. I like the city and the impressive buildings. It's just beautiful. The food is really good too. The hotel is nice. All in all, it's simply a great venue to race. The special thing about Qatar for us is to win. But you have to watch out for opponents, and you have to be careful. Al Kamzi, for example, they're all strong racers. Ideally, we'd like to get a great result here, and if possible, win for Team Germany. Russia would be the team to beat as they headed into the day's two sprint races with a 16-point cushion over Team Germany and an 18-point lead over Team Belarus. With his teammate Rashid al Ramayti not competing, Rashid al Kamzi would be driving in the number 14 boat. The Nations Cup circuit in Qatar is a 1,580-meter, four-pin, rectangular course. Well, the course is, uh, is good, you know. We uh, take a couple of laps, we do a good time trials. Uh, I finish fifth. Uh, for the race, you know, the same situation. Uh, we want to make a good start and uh, jump uh, everybody in the start, like uh, do a really good start. I have pole position, and that always gives you an advantage for the race. That being said, the race is the race, so we'll see what happens. Teams do one parade lap for the spectators before the race begins. Final moments as the teams await the start lights for Sprint Race 1. The race begins. Andrei Panyushkin in the number 9 boat has pole as he leads the field to the commitment boy. Beside Panyushkin is Team Belarus's Roman Vandeshev in boat 2, followed by Team Germany's Mike Simura in boat 7. The boats get around the commitment boy without incident as they head down to that tricky boy number four. But Nushkin takes a very wide angle from the outside. He wants to make this first turn as smooth as he can. 
we see Mike Schumer is on board as the German driver comes in on the inside, trying to claw his way up to the Belarus boats. There's that long and relatively flat open straight to race boy number one. Panyushkin and Vandeshev are flawless so far, driving smooth and in command. Further back, we see Mohamed Alobaid leave from fifth start position, trying to find some gaps to move up the field through the spray. Alobaidli is going neck and neck with Domenico Lady, the young Italian getting the better of Alobaidli as Team Qatar looks on. Back to the lead boat, Panyushkin opening a one second gap with Vandeshev. In the battle between Team Qatar and Team Italy, Mohamed Alobaidli has reclaimed his position from Lady as they come around boy three. No change in the top three, Panyushkin, Vandeshev and Shimura dominate. The second Russian boat, number 10 with Konstantin Ustinov in fourth position behind the leading boats. Behind him, Alobaidli of Qatar, Lady of Italy, Enzenhofer of Germany. And then the number one Belarus boat with Dimitri Malkin, followed by Roberto Lopiano of Italy. Team UAE's Rashid al Rameti coming through to turn boy three. He's hit a boy, that's going to be a yellow flag. The boats motor around on the yellow, holding their race positions. Green flag. Lopiano is fast off the mark on the restart as he gets the jump on Shimura of Germany, but the German gets back in on the inside. Meanwhile, Panyushkin and Vandeshev are still in command of things as the boats go around. Conditions become choppier, wavier, harder to negotiate. Battle at the back between Saudi Arabian driver Saud Ahmed and Belarus driver Dimitri Malkin in boat one. Big battle at the top of the course between Domenico Lady of Italy and Dimitri Malkin of Belarus. A lap later, it's Dimitri Malkin who's putting the pressure on Domenico Lady. With the laps counting down, Panyushkin is going from strength to strength as he opens a comfortable lead over Vandeshev in second position, who also extends his lead over Shimura in third. But the big news is the surge up the field of Rashid al Kemzi, the talented UAE driver in boat 14. He moved up from 12th to 4th as Team Abu Dhabi, as Team UAE looked on. Al Kamzi, who's a two-time sprint race winner from 2013, is now putting the pressure on Mike Shimura for third spot. The two going neck and neck down that straight to turn boy one. And Al Kamzi passes the German. Panyushkin's lead shrinks a few laps in as Bandeshev is just a couple boat lengths away from the Russian, with Al Kamzi now in third position. What a race for Al Kamzi. Roberto Lopiano crashes out of the race. He couldn't keep the nose down in Qatar's famously unpredictable wind conditions. The nose goes up and it's a flip. Yellow flag. Fortunately, no harm done to Roberto Lopiano. He emerges unscathed, but not so happy. Amazing, stupendous. I took a wonderful four second flight. The race would end on a yellow flag. A shame for Al Kemzi, who had passed Vandeshev to move into second on the same lap as Lopiano's crash, which meant the boats would revert to the pre-crash lineup. So Vandeshev holds on to second as the Italian boat is towed away. I started the race off very well, but then I started to get tired and barely just handled it till the end of the race. I'm glad to win. There are the Sprint Race 1 results. Andrei Ponyushkin holds on for the win ahead of Roman Vandeshev, with Rashid al Kemzi coming in third for the UAE and Mike Simura fourth. Race two would determine the Nations Cup results at the Qatar Grand Prix. The last race uh, I finished the third, and uh, this race uh, I'll start on the Benton the third, and uh, I'll push hard to get uh, the first, 
and they hope I get it. Final preparations are complete. The teams are ready for the one last race. The lights go out and the race is on. Good start from Andrei Panyushkin, but Vandeshev is also right up there beside the Russian. Alkemzi gets left behind a little between Vandeshev and Shimura. It's a tight pack to the commitment boy. Panyushkin is first to the turn, then Vandeshev and Alkemzi. The boats jostle for positions in the first lap, trying to get the edge on one another. Panyushkin leads again, but Alkemzi is going to be menacing the Russian and Belarusian boats, it seems. There's the onboard for Alkemzi, and just look at the visibility. Sun in his eyes, spray on his windscreen, not easy to negotiate. Panyushkin nevertheless opens his lead, and Vandeshev tries to keep up. Dmitry Malkin trying to make his way up in that straight to turn boy number one. No changes up front, Panyushkin looks comfortable as he leads the field around the first lap. Meanwhile, Alkamzi in third, still giving dogged pursuit of Vandeshev. But the Belarus driver is fending the Emirati off well. The boats come around that tricky corner to turn boy four. Drivers always with an eye, a few meters ahead, trying to gauge the water conditions, which is crucial to avoid other boats, rooster tails, and unexpected rollers. The number 10 Russian boat of Konstantin Ustinov in fourth keeps clear of the German boats behind him, followed by Dmitry Malkin. Further back, the race one tussle between Alobaidli and Domenico Lady of Italy is relived in race two. Alkamzi in his unceasing pursuit of Vandeshev, but Alkamzi pushes too hard and he takes out a boy. That will be another yellow flag, the third of the day. Alkamzi will go on, but with that damage, he's going to lose a lot of aerodynamic flow. Green flag restart, boats all bunched up trying to get the jump on each other. And Panyushkin is napping. He doesn't seem to be aware the green flag is up. He gets a rude awakening. But Fandeshev has already passed him and so does Alkemzi. Panyushkin unfortunate as he drops back to third at the restart. The new race leader is Roman Vandeshev, and right beside him is Rashid Alkemzi. Despite his damaged boat, with Andrei Panyushkin in third position trying to reclaim his lost lead. There's a fierce battle up front now between Vandeshev and Alkemzi. Alkemzi looking to find a way around the Belarusian, with Panyushkin dropping back. Further back, Dmitry Malkin holds off German driver Bernd Enzenhofer on his inside. But all eyes are on the number two boat, Vandeshev, and number 14 boat, Rashid Alkemzi, as Alkemzi looks for a way around Vandeshev's spray, trying to find some chink in the Belarus driver's armor. In third, way behind them now, is Panyushkin. The rest of the field is densely packed after that yellow flag, trying to get the jump on each other. Alkamzi pushing hard on Vandeshev, and he nearly loses it on turn boy four. Rashid Alkamzi is going all out, not holding back one bit. <laughs> Domenico Lady is up against Saud Ahmed. The Saudi Arabian keeping the young Italian off his tail for now, but Lady is pushing as hard as he can. After that near crash out on turn boy four, Alkemzi relinquished some ground to Vandeshev. The Belarusian opening a few seconds gap with Alkemzi, while Panyushkin moved up to close the gap behind him and the Emirati. Meanwhile, there's a three-way tussle behind... <laughs> between Ustinov, the Russian number 10, Naim al Kadawi of Saudi Arabia, and Mike Simura of Germany. Big battle at the back between Mohammed al of Qatar and number eight German driver Bernd Enzenhofer. 
Meanwhile, Vandeshev keeps his cool and keeps his lead ahead of Al Kemzi as he closes the race out. There it is, a win in sprint race two for Belarus, but it's Russia that takes the overall Nations Cup Qatar Grand Prix win. A fifth place finish for Dmitry Malkin and behind him, Bernd Enzenhofer. Rashid al Kemzi finishes the race runner-up, but a one-lap penalty for taking out that boy drops him back to 10th, moving Panushkin up to 2nd. It's mostly down to luck that I won, because my partners are more experienced than me, but they unfortunately had some problems. So I was lucky, but I'm happy about it. There are the overall Qatar Grand Prix results. Team Russia win their first ever Nations Cup with 130 points. Belarus end up on 109 points, making do with runner-up ahead of Germany on 94 points, followed by Saudi Arabia, Italy, UAE and Qatar. Nothing really went to plan. We just had to improvise as the competition progressed. It was really just good teamwork and flexibility that helped us achieve this win, but we're happy about that. That concludes the 2015 UIM Nations Cup Grand Prix of Qatar. See you next time.